Miss Willards. Yes. I might have to leave early because I got uh practice at like three ten. Okay. Yeah. No problem. All right. This shouldn't take more than like 20, 25 minutes. Okay. You are good. Yana, yes. Oops, Teresa Victoria. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. hello. Yeah. Oops, don't want that. For the bot. There we go. Eleven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Lovely, lovely. All right. Oh, there's Megan and Marina. Um. Miss Wood, I have to leave early for soccer. Yep, got it. It shouldn't take more than like 20, 25 minutes at the most, and you can leave early if you need to. Not a problem. Okay. Thank you. You got it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. It's 2.32. Yes, almost the end of the week. Woo! May the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, please warm us up. It is cold outside, and some of us are having games and competitions after school. So please warm us up from the inside out. Keep everyone safe with no injuries um, or accidents or anything like that. Help us to get stronger and come together again face-to-face -to -face on Monday. Woo! After a long week of virtual learning, help us to be patient, Lord. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I've just got a little bit for you to kind of put this bad boy to rest. So if you have this packet somewhere, please get it out. If you um, do not, I put it in electronic form on uh, Google Classroom. So you can find it there if you need to. We've been working on this for a hot second. I want to wrap it up, finish it up, because tomorrow I've got a uh, video for you on dissecting a sheep brain, because that's what we're going to do on Monday. We're going to dissect sheep brains. And I've got, I think, five or four or five brains for your class. So not everyone is going to dissect a brain. They're kind of expensive. They're like $13 a piece. And I bought them myself. So um, and I have three classes of anatomy. So you'll have to think about, do you want to be the one getting your hands dirty, dissecting that brain for your team, or do you definitely want to be one of those bystanders? So we'll figure that all out on Monday, but just be thinking about that. You'll obviously have goggles and gloves and an apron and all that kind of good stuff. So you can all touch the brains if you want to, not a problem. Um, but you'll have to take turns then if you all want to do that. So be thinking about what you want to do. So tomorrow's video is just a, a quick walkthrough of dissecting a sheep brain. There's nothing that you have to do um, with it. So if you just want to say, well, Ertz, if it's not a grade, I'm not doing it. Totally fine. Got you. I got you. So that's for tomorrow and then Monday. And then we're going to also dig into our mannequins next week and start putting the nervous system in. So, all right, did that give you enough time to grab this? Hopefully. All right, so I'm going to go over a couple of things. A lot of it we've actually filled in, and some of it we're going to cross out. So we're going to start here on page numeral uno. And the first question is, the nervous system is the body's control center and communication network. What three functions does it serve? Here they go. Number one, it senses changes in the environment. So write that down. 
it senses changes in the environment. I was gonna go, just go ahead and do like a little mini lecture on this, but every class out of my three is at a different place in this guy. So I thought, I'll just go through it all together. There's Bella, awesome. So number one is that it senses changes in the environment. Bella, we're working our way through this. We've done a lot of it already. This is that nervous system packet that I handed out a while ago. So I'm just going through the ones that we didn't get to already. Number one function is that it senses changes in the environment. Number two, it interprets the sensory information. So as information is coming in, it interprets it and figures out what's going on. Number three, it responds. So it sends a response out. So it receives information, it interprets it, and then it gives a response, it sends a response out to the body. Those are the three things that the nervous system does. Number two, first page here. How does the nervous system accomplish its homeostatic role, maintaining peace by sending electrical messages? By sending electrical messages all over the body. Ooh, I forgot to ask, did anybody find the Easter egg bonus opportunity that was hidden in the assignment? I have the, yeah. Yes, let's see. Yeah, turn the camera on so I can see. Yes, Maddie, Luby, you're awesome. All right, so Maddie, who else has got something for me? I do. Ready to go. Andy, let's see, turn the camera on, dude. Um, Marina, yes, she. Okay. Oh. Yes, Andy, yes, good job. So all three of those folks, good job, you homo sapiens, having something <laughs> Sheep, Molly, nice girl. Yes, yes, some sheep. Good job. All right, bonus opportunity is over. Wait, Miss Willard. What? Let's see it. All right, I'm I got sorry. you. Sorry. Oh, you. gosh. I got, you. Okay. <laughs> I got you. Sheep, got it. That was the Easter egg. So for bonus, you were supposed to have something sheep held up by your face. All right, because we're dissecting sheep brains. And I just decided to be silly with that. Okay. Excellente. All right. How does it accomplish that homeostatic role? It sends electrical signals. Number three, how does the role of the endocrine system compare with that of the nervous system? Endocrine system, if you've never heard of it before, that's like all your glands and stuff. So hormones. So here's your response to that. The endocrine system releases hormones, which are chemical messages, Endocrine system releases hormones in response to the nervous system. So endocrine system is just a bunch of glands and things like that, that release hormones like testosterone, estrogen, thyroid hormone, uh, follicle stimulating hormone, um, epinephrine, adrenaline, all of those things are hormones. So endocrine system deals with hormones and it interacts with the nervous system sending chemical messages. All right, letter A, nervous system division at the bottom there. Two principal divisions of the nervous system. Let me share my screen because I got some pictures for you. Because if I talked at you the whole time, it would be horrible. This is bad enough. All right, my little thing go away. There we go. We've got two divisions of the nervous system, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system central nervous system and peripheral. And so what does the central nervous system consist of? Got it for you right here, brain and spinal cord. What's the peripheral nervous system? It's got those cranial, spinal and peripheral nerves. Central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, peripheral nervous system, cranial, spinal and peripheral nerves. What's the relationship between the two? Last question on that page number one is that the nerves send and receive information for the central nervous system. So the PNS, you can use that if you want for peripheral nervous system, the PNS 
receives and sends information for the CNS. The PNS sends and receives information for the CNS. Awesome, way to hang in there. What are sensory neurons? Top of the next page, what are sensory neurons? They receive information. They receive information from the body, send it to the brain. What are motor neurons? They send information from the brain to the parts of the body that make movement happen. So sensory neurons receive information, send it to the brain. Motor neurons are sending information that create movement, create movement. Juice there. All right, Ava. So we are working on this dude. Got about another 10, 15 minutes, and that is it. We're going to polish this bad boy off. So grab this, Ava, if you've got it. It's that nervous tissue packet. Okay. So we just did sensory and motor neurons on the top of page two. Okay, got it. Two, yes. All right, so now uh, sensory, motor neuron, sensory neurons are receiving, motor neurons are sending out information from the brain and they're causing movement. All right, compare the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic deals with, so right in that area, we're in the middle of page two here, somatic nervous system deals with sensory information from skeletal muscles, skin, and the special senses like sight, hearing, taste, smell. So the somatic nervous system deals with sensory information from skeletal muscles, the skin, and the special senses. Skeletal muscles, skin, and special senses. The autonomic nervous system, it deals with sensory information with what we call the viscera, which is like all the stuff inside your trunk. So your heart, your digestive tract, any smooth muscles that you've got and your glands. It deals with sensory information from your viscera, this area right here. So that is your heart, your lungs, your smooth muscle, your digestive system glands, all the stuff that's in here in your trunk. Guts. All right, the next portion here, your autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts. So you've got this one called the parasympathetic and then this one called the sympathetic. Write down parasympathetic and sympathetic and I'm gonna give you a quick way to remember the difference between the two. So your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest part of your autonomic nervous system. So when you've eaten a big fat meal, like I'll sit down and have like three course meal, whatever. I'm not going to go run a marathon after that. Why? Because your body's set up to only really one run, one run, one, there we go, at one time. So you can't eat a big meal and then go run around. Your body's not set up to do that. So this is your rest and digest part of your nervous system. So your pupils are going to constrict. Your heart rate slows down. Your digestive system kicks up, rest and digest, because you're going to digest things that you just ate. Your sympathetic is the opposite one. That's your fight or flight. So all the things having to do with, oh my gosh, there's a bear that just walked through the door. I've got to respond to it. So your pupils are going to now dilate. Your heart rate's going to increase. You're going to stop digesting food. 
So if you were to go run a marathon, for the most part, your body doesn't require a whole lot of food because it's not going to digest it. It's not good to eat a big heavy meal before you run a marathon because you're forcing your two nervous systems, part of the autonomic nervous system to function at the same time. And they're not really set up to do that. So your body's wanting to rest and digest and you're running a marathon. So fight or flight. So it gets a little bit confused and you can have some digestive issues with that. So sympathetic is digestive system shuts kind of almost completely down to nothing. Heart rate increases, pupils dilate. I'm getting ready to fight. Miss Willard, I have to go. I need okay. a little extra time because the walleye fest, my, oh, my road is so like busy. I bet. Yeah, no problem at all. I'll see you in person on Monday. We're not doing much more. I'll post this if you need it. Okay, thank you. All right, you bet. See ya. All right, we're going to skippity doo da the last part of number two. We're going to skippity doo da the top of page three. And so on page three, letter B, I remember going over this with one class, and I think it was yours. Did we talk about what the myelin sheath was? May or may not have it. Okay. If we didn't, if you don't have it written down, then we didn't talk about it. So the myelin sheath, which is letter B, at the bottom of page three, it's a fatty covering around your axons, and it allows... Um, oh, it's functions on the next page. So it's a fatty covering around your axons. Fat does not conduct electricity well. So we'll talk about that in a second. It's a fatty covering around your axons. Axons are these long parts of your nerve. And then on the top of page four, what is the function of it? It speeds up nerve impulses speeds up nerve impulses because the impulse only has to jump from one raw part of the nerve to the next because this fatty part doesn't conduct electricity. It speeds up your nerve impulses from about five meters per second to 150 meters per second. So super fast. So I have something I want to do, boom, my body's going to do it because of my myelin sheath covering my axons. We're going to skip, how is it formed? We're going to skip the neurolemma what are the nodes of Ranvier? They are raw portions of nerve that are not covered by myelin. Raw nerve, not covered by myelin. There's these little, the little blue spots. Those are nodes of Ranvier. So now we are, okay, number two. The main function of nerves, they're conducting electrical impulses. That's their main function. Number two, what's the main function of neurons? And then we're going to skip the rest on that page. They conduct electrical impulses. We're going to skip cell body and missile substance. Turn to page five. Now at the bottom of page five, you should have a drawing because we did that one day. And it looks like this guy right over here that's on my screen. You should have a drawing of a nerve cell body. We're not gonna take time to do that if you don't have that. So if you don't have that, just put a little note to yourself, draw a nerve cell body there. The dendrites are the parts at the top of page five, receiving sensory information into the nerve cell body. Axons are sending information away from the nerve cell body. Dendrites are all these little guys right here. They're receiving information into the nerve cell body and axons are sending it away, sending the information away from the nerve cell body. So that's the top of page five. We're gonna skip part B. Dendrites receive, axons send that information away. And after the barbershop, gray and white matter. It's really summed up for you in this picture right here, if you can see that. So white matter, we'll start with that first. You have both in your brain. You're gonna see both in the sheep brain on Monday. Um, and they are literally are that color. So this is a darker gray. This is almost kind of like a lighter gray. It's not completely white, but white matter makes up about 60% of your brain. And it is responsible for communication. 
both in the brain and between the brain and the body. So white matter is communication. <coughs> Excuse me. White matter, 60% of the brain, and its job is communication within the brain, both sides, all around, and between the brain and the body. It's the areas of the brain that communicate with the body. Gray matter is the other 40% of your brain, and it processes information. It's gonna process the information that's received. The white matter in your brain is actually um, well, the whole brain is very plastic, but it doesn't really form completely until they think about middle age. So you're learning new things up until middle age. It doesn't mean that you can't new, learn new things, but the white matter in your brain is mostly formed by the time you're middle age. The gray matter, the processing part of your brain, that's usually completely formed by the time you're 25. I think we talked about that before, and especially in your frontal lobe. We're going to skippity doo dah part C. We're going to go to page number seven. You should have filled this in already. If not, we're going to skip over to page nine because that's the important part. The actual nerve impulse, and that's what you already described to me. You did this in an assignment, so you should be able to do that. If you want to just write that down, it's depolarization and repolarization. It's a nerve impulse. And remember, you drew a picture on page 10, this little guy. You should have done that. And we filled that out together in class. We also did um, saltatory conduction, which is when we drew a picture of this in class, draw a picture, page 11. And that's when we talked about multiple sclerosis and if the myelin sheath gets eaten away, then it's bad news and all kinds of dis diseases and disorders can happen when the myelin sheath is eaten away. And last but not least, you guys have made it, way to go, is page 12, the synapse. So that was um, new information. We didn't talk about it in class. And it was in, I think, the third video from your Ed Puzzles. I know Ava did one of these. It's like, oh, Ed Puzzles, we're so tired of Ed Puzzles. I hear you. Hopefully, this is the last time we'll do this. We'll never be shut down virtual again. Hopefully. So your synapse on page 12. Describe the conduction along the syn synapse. I'm going to do that for you, showing you this picture. So there's an electrical impulse that's converted to a chemical message, neurotransmitters, an electrical impulse that's converted to a chemical message that's either converted to another electrical impulse if it's another nerve or a response if it's a cell. Let me say that again. So it's an electrical impulse that's converted to a chemical message right here in the synaptic cleft. That's either converted to another electrical impulse if it's another nerve on the other side or a response if it's a cell. So when the muscle contraction explanation that you guys did, you talked about this. This chemical message was acetylcholine and it caused calcium to be released. So it's an electrical impulse converted to a chemical message that's either converted to another chemical message if it's another nerve or a response by the cell if the nerve is directly going to a cell. And that's it, folks. You did it. Awesome, awesome. All right. Anybody have any questions, comments, hints, bribes, jokes, or whatever? Or uh, are, we, just... are we having a Zoom tomorrow? No. So tomorrow, all I'm having you do is look at that. If you are like wanting to be the one who dissects and you want to know what the heck you're doing, um, because it takes a while to dissect the brain and we only have one day, then you're going to watch that little six or seven minute dissection of the sheet brain. 
there are no questions to answer. That's it. If you're like Willards, if you're not taking a grade, forget you. I am not even looking at that. Totally fine with me. I will not be offended. I feel your pain. So that's all you got for tomorrow. No Zoom. Wait, okay, when is the you. dissection again? Dissection's Monday. We will be, be, we'll be back face to face on Monday. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, I have a question about the the thing we just filled out. If we miss any, are you gonna post it on Google Classroom or? Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but actually, no, that's a lie. Yes, I was because a couple people were gone for some of that. So I'm going to hand write these responses and then I will post it on Google Classroom. So yes. The answer okay, thank yes. you. Yep, you got it. Anything else? Otherwise, I'll wrap this up with prayer. We made it with five minutes before three. You guys ready? All right, let's wrap it up, man. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we especially want to lift up Davy and Josh, those two homo sapiens, man, they are senioritis like none other. So we just want to lift them up, help them to persevere and be strong. Help us all to persevere and be strong and just not give up on these last four or five weeks we've got for the end of the school year. Help us to finish strong. Help us to draw closer to you, to love others better and to forgive. Amen, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace out, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Bye. Bye. Hey, have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you. Yep. I have a question. Yes. So uh, I'm still quarantined for Monday, so I won't be there when you guys do the, do like the dissection and stuff. Do you still yep. want me to like zoom in or like FaceTime someone in class or something? If you'd like to, either one. So I'm giving, there's a couple other people in your same situation that won't be there Monday. And I think one person won't be there Tuesday either. So you can Zoom if you want to, but I'm not gonna hold you responsible for um, the lab since you're not here to do it. Cause that's just, you know, if you want to, yes, please do that. It'd be really cool actually to do that, but you'll just be in a group with somebody else and they'll just put your name on the lab paper that they're gonna submit. Okay, do we get to pick our groups? Yeah, totally. Okay, so do you want, do I have to zoom in or can I like FaceTime that person? You can FaceTime. Yep. Totally okay. Up to you. I think I'll do that. Okay. Okay. Bye. See ya.